Hello everybody, this is Richard Cispedes and um, I'm here back again to talk about, um, you know, fighting and defending oneself and uh, and how to utilize, if you haven't seen the videos of me uh, at work, you know, during my break time talking about um, utilizing um, sociopathic, um, uh, um, sociopathic nature, you know, the sociopathic thinking of, uh, of learning to, to defend yourself. You know, that seems kind of a, a little bit wild, but you have to understand that, like, in the animal world, the lions and the tigers and the gorillas, they have that sociopathic nature within them, you know, because they uh, they had to learn to overanalyze and overcalculate their environment in order to survive, because there are no laws out there. There is no protection. So you're out there in the raw nature. You have to have a certain way of thinking that's beyond the normal comfort zone that we live as human beings. Human beings, we're too comfortable. You know, we we're we're um we're um enclosed. You know that that's how human beings live, and and the um and 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 sociopathic. You know, it, it exists within the animals. That's how they live because even when they're sleeping, like tigers or gorillas. The, the 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 nature of overanalyzing of 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 looking at weaknesses um finding weaknesses in prey finding weaknesses in uh, because we don't give animals credit that they're smart they have to learn to calculate and evaluate distances in order to to um, attack their prey you know they have to understand that um only in certain times of the year can there be animals or antelope to to uh to uh, um, to strategize against and to kill and eat, you know, we don't give enough credit. So like in the way, the animals live in a sociopathic uh, way of thinking, but it's so hardwired and so fluid within them that as human beings looking at them, we don't really think of it as that, but it is that. Now a loose definition for an a, a sociopathic way of 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 uh, thinking for an animal would be like, you know how in human beings. Um, we all live in the same neighborhood, you know. Um, you know, we all want to get along. You get along with the neighbor. You talk to them and all that, you know. And that's just how we are. And um, we're just close together. And there's no way not to avoid it. But like in the animal world, out in the in, in the in the plains and all that, where the tigers are, um, the 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 their prey and their antelope is there. And and the and the and the um, all the animals are all in one place, like a neighborhood. They're all in one enclosed place. There's like a, a lake here and there's some trees there and there's a hyenas there and they're all one big family basically. But um the, you see that they're all one big family. So what happens is that um the tigers, since they're all there, it seems as though looking from a distance that they're all one big family, that everything's going okay. But it, you know, it's not. Because what what the tigers and the and the, and the um the um what is it? Um the predators do is that they they create a false sense of comfort and safety for the antelope and their prey to get closer and closer to where the lake is and they kind of just sit there and they relax and then the tigers and the hyenas are there and they're just kind of like waiting and making them comfortable and then they strategize and then they pounce that's a loose definition of the animalistic sociopathic way of thinking because sociopathic thinking in human terms is befriending somebody making them feel comfortable around them and then they prey on them they take away their money they take away um you know they beat them up or, or they kill them or, or they murder them or whatever that's exactly the same way that's equal very much equal to the way animals are in the and in the, in, in, in the wild you know the the, the antelope get closer and they get comfortable because they have no choice anyways sometimes that's the only place they can find for you know um um, little small ponds for drinking and all that and then and then the animals they get close to them you know because you know that the animals um they don't um it's kind of like it's it's kind of like contradicting you know it's like it's like every day there's a chance for a tiger not to attack the tiger has an ability to make a decision not to hunt not to hunt it's up to them just like human beings have a decision not to kill not to murder not to cause conflict you know, human beings, animals are both the same. They both have a conscience, uh, a conscience, and 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 and, and um, and they both have um, guilt and all that. So, like, you know, um, 
the, the, the tigers, they utilize it because they have to. They're in the wild. They have to survive. They have to learn to eat and fight for survival and to, um, and to progress and to give up and, and to um, protect their family and, and have sustenance and all that. And um, one way to use that sociopathically in fighting is to analyze um, people around you of every second, every moment. Animals, they do that. Gorillas, they do that. The reason why gorillas are so dominant, so stronger than human beings, isn't just because they're physically stronger. They're more, um, their muscles are just all bounded, binded together, and they're just small little, like, huge-ass, muscle-bound, big-jawed monsters. But it's basically just one big fist of muscle. That's what a gorilla is. But, like, it's because they're strengthened within their mind. They're strengthened within their mind, psychologically and emotionally, sociopathically. Um, it's hardwired within them to constantly be subconsciously, constantly be calculating everything that's around them. We don't give them credit, but they know where all the trees are at. They know where all the lakes are at. They know how long it takes to get certain places. Um, they, and they don't count the steps, but they know roughly the distances, and they... and and they socialize with their partners and the babies and they protect them and then they have um, 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 hierarchy just like human beings do you know like they they create and they manifest that community and that comfort but that sociopathic way of thinking of over analyzing is always there because you have to break through the barrier of the facade of what is there human beings already do that in day to day to day basis they break through the facades of what they thought their stars were. They meet a star and then they see through them and they say, no, this guy isn't the same what I thought he was. He's actually uh, boring and very weak and, and I, I really don't like his personality. That's how the animal world is. But it's it, but but they're so advanced that, you know, the animals in the wild, they're right on the edge, always. Their their mental energy is always on high peak all the time. They're always, you know, it's it's always like that. You know, they're always right on the edge, right on the edge, razor's edge, always calculating everything. No matter how comfortable a day went for them, they're always on that psychological, sociopathic way of calculating in order to survive and to um, look beyond what is what is relevant, what is comfortable, look beyond it and try to get more, more, more. And that's what human beings have to do in order to defend yourself. You have to look through the person. You know, and like I said, um, 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 animals defeat people because it's hardwired within them. What I believe is that the sociopathic nature and the way of thinking, the hardwired wildness of their mind is what really gives them the strength. They may have muscle and all this stuff, but I, I, I believe that, 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 that the mind is what really drives their strength, you know, the, the mind and all our body, you know, we're not in space-time. Space-time is within us, and we are intertwined with space-time. And the, the animals, because of their mental energy and because of their, 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 their being is so heightened, and so their being is so, is so heightened that their, their, their consciousness, the consciousness is energy. Thinking is energy. It produces energy, so that consciousness is fused, hardwired, bolted, welded, fused within the quantum, quantum foam of existence itself, and so it's constantly, always, you know, connected to space-time. They're utilizing um, their universe. They're, they're, they're utilizing their existence. They're, they're utilizing space and time, and quantum mechanics itself, physics itself, in their um, in their favor. So they're utilizing everything. Everything is so, um, the fusion of that within their consciousness, the fusion is so locked in and so in, in fused and so blended so strongly that um, that energy uh, pulls through throughout their whole body. And so whatever action they do, it's more efficient. It's more stronger. It's more powerful. And that's the things that people have to do. But people... We actually, I think that we can actually be more stronger than even them, even than the animals. Like how I said about, um, um, because it's like this, like, you know, the, you know, I'm not racial. I have black friends and all that. I'm not, but you have to be justified in who you are. You have to be justified in who you are and what you want. No matter if you're Asian or if you're Caucasian 
or if you're Latino or whatever, light skin, dark skin, doesn't matter what you are, you have to be justified in your own existence. You know, we come from um, an origin of, of African Americans. African Americans are the uh, the original origin of all races. They are. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go off, but I'm going to come back. We, we all come from them. So we all have part of their, um, um, of every part of us that's ugly is part of them. Every part of us that's wild and crazy is a part of them because we come from them. We get that from them. We get those ugly characteristics of racial indifference, of psychopathic, disgusting behavior that white people and other people of light skin seem to have because we got it from the original origin. We cannot get that from just anywhere. Some of those ugly characteristics are wired within the brain and those characteristics come from the origin of black people so e even though people want to separate black people from white people and say white people are crazy and all ugly and all that the thing is though is that the black people have to understand is that we got we got all those ugly characteristics from them because they are the origin they are the origin of all that they they're they're the pioneers of that ugliness it was with it, it was instilled within them so basically, the, the black people, they can criticize white people and everything else. But basically, what they're doing is that they're criticizing themselves because the white people is basically just an albino black man. That's all a white person is. But that their facial characteristics have changed because they've uh, migrated in the climate change and the evolution and those changes and all that. But even though all the things, all the ugly characteristics that we have from that, that we have now is all because of the original race having it before us we got it from them we got all those things from them basically the the black race the the other races that we see asian and, and hispanic and white is basically basically the twin brother with the light skin tone that's all it is it's the twin self with the light skin tone that's what a white man is that that's what a white man is to a black person it's it's themselves if a human race was summed up to be one person it'll be one black person one black person is responsible for all the ugly characteristics that every race seems to have and all of the destructiveness that the race has. One black person is responsible because that black person has all of those characteristics within himself. It's like, it's like um, when you have children. Some of the characteristics that the children has gets from you. Gets it from you. You know, it's like the black person is a father. And the, the father gave birth to these different light colored different personalities and characteristics that were from him you know so the black people you know we can't say that they're the uh, and they, they are the original origin but at the same time all the ugliness came from them they can't escape that you know for the black people basically um everything that we think and feel as the light-skinned people is basically it's like the black people are living in a twilight zone because it's like, it's like, uh, 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 imagine if you will, um, 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 an episode on Twilight Zone where like a black person wakes up and then all of a sudden he sees himself robbing a store and then he sees himself stabbing someone and then he goes to the mall and he sees nothing but multiples of himself um, walking around the mall because that's what, a, that's what the other races are, nothing, of, nothing but of himself. The black person is nothing more then himself, uh, the other uh, races are nothing more than the black person being dispersed, you know, of himself, you know, multiples of himself. So if if the if the original race was summed up to be, the if the black race was summed up to be one person, that one person would be responsible for all of the other races and all the destruction that's happening in the world, because all that ugliness and destructiveness, all came from the original race. They cannot escape the truth. The black people can't escape the truth because they they're the ones that basically they're the ones that were the true pioneers of ugly racism. They're they're the true pioneers of, of discrimination. They're the true pioneers of self self destruction and insanity and disgustingness. Because because if they're the original race and if we came from them, then everything that we have, every every personality that's ever came up in the history of the world, all came from that one black person. You know that, that that's a thing and they can't escape that basically even though you're individually even though black people are individuals 
you know, your white man, the white man that you see down the street stabbing someone in the neck is basically you. It's basically you. Because, because, um, like, 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 uh, like genetics, you know, passing on, like, genes, like, the human race, we all look the same. Wide nose, big lips, like, if the, if the human race is nothing but black people, that's all how we would look, just like African Americans. So basically, it's you killing someone else because, because you, you gave birth to that. Your race, the black people's original race, gave birth to their twin brother that's white killing someone so basically it's like you're in a twilight zone and you're responsible because it's all because of you you no race is is responsible for the ugliness we're all just one race in the twilight zone we're all responsible because you look I, I look at my uh, my african-american friend and he looks back at me and we both see each other we, we both see the twin self in each other I see myself in him and he sees himself in me, but we all see each other in the same skin tone, dark. You know? So we're all living in this twilight zone. We're all living in a twilight zone where like you you are the one in the twilight zone seeing yourself killing people and causing destruction. Even though there's independence, even though there's individuality, when it comes right down to um the primitive aspects of, of the origin of of uh of jealousy and uh, and deceit and hatred, it all comes from one race, you know. So it's like we're all responsible for it because basically everybody is just one person. Everybody, you know, just think of it as a Twilight Zone episode where like one person wakes up and he sees himself and you know multiples of uh, millions of people. Just himself everywhere he looks on television, magazines, just himself modeling. It's him, 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 because we're all responsible for that. The black people, they're the ones that are seeing themselves in the magazines and in, in Africa and in, in, uh, in Australia and all that stuff. Because they're the ones that are responsible for all that, you know. And that's not hate, that's truth. And in this, and, and as time passes, science is going to reveal that and common sense is going to come out is that. There's no way to avoid it. So we're all just one race. And the, the, the ugliness came from the original race. Because we all we all got from that. We all may look different, but we're all black. We're all just twin brothers with skin with light skin tones. We're all black. We we, we, we just have light skin tones, that's all we are. And anyways, um what I'm trying to get at is that uh like what I'm trying to get at is more bigger than fighting itself. I'm trying to get at something that is more toward like uh, truth and speaking truth and truth is one thing that's one big mass you know it's not just parts that we think of truth as parts we think of truth as something as one big mass you know and uh the animals that like 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 for instance um like um I, I got off a little bit but um for instance you know just to end the video like let's say there's um uh, there's a, a a group of of uh of uh, gorillas living in a in a in this is area and then in the gorillas they have this white albino gorillas but they're weaker than the dark black uh haired gorillas but just because they're weaker and they're more feeble or they seem to be feeble or they whenever the National Geographic shows them on TV and they show them as being weak or all that doesn't necessarily mean that that they don't they don't have the ability to tap into something because the albino gorilla is still black the albino gorilla the Asian gorilla the Hispanic gorilla is still black the brown gorilla is still black you know they still have the ability to tap into something that was um given to them from the original black gorilla you know they just need to look deep within their mind to see that to see what's what's inside here it's not strength it's mentality you have to see through things to see them as they are you know and um it's kind of a contradiction because gorillas and animals they're 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 way more primitive and from and they have muscles and all that, but you know, it's like a whole new way of thinking. You know, and I believe that uh, you know, um that's just one way to connect them. But like I said about um 
you can withstand a baseball bat to the head. You know, um, it sounds kind of crazy, but you can withstand a baseball bat to the head because when a person swings a baseball bat, all that energy is flowing through them, vibrating right through them into the bat. And when they swing the bat, their character and their personality and the child within them that has not developed at all is just hiding in a, in a little, um, in a little uh, it's encapsulated, protected by the facade of muscle, the fakeness of muscle. The bat, the bat is actually being swung by that child that that person is hiding. If you were to be hit by even the most professional baseball player in the head with the most fastest swing, the most powerful swing in the head, if you were to see through the person swinging the bat and you got hit in the head, you would not be, you would not get hurt. You would not get hurt. The bat would not cause no damage because you would not be in the state of acknowledging the situation. You would see through the situation. You'll be, you'll be above the situation because you'll be thinking more further into the future. You'll be, be detaching yourself from the present moment emotionally and seeing and progressing more further outward. You'll be more stronger than the present moment. You emotionally detach yourself sociopathically like the animals do. You must see through the person sociopathically and learn to um, just detach yourself. The present moment is the past. You're looking at it like an old uh, 60s videotape. You've seen it 20 times. You know, uh, you're bored of it. Like when you get involved in a situation, a conflict, you have to see the situation as something that has already occurred that's boring. It's boring. You, you see right through it. You know, like when you make friends with someone, you have to sociopathically at that moment, you have to, um, not to be mean or rude or nothing like that. You can still be friends. But when you see, when you make friends with a person that seems like if you were to fight them, if you were to say, wait, what if I fought this person, he'll beat me up. You know, just to think. But if you were to make friends with them, you would have to kind of, um, um, push your emotional and mental state of that relationship or that situation in the moment of your life you have to progress so that so that your mind is 20 years ahead of the moment so that you play through that moment as though you've been there already 20 years you've made friends you've been through 20 years of the friendship with a friend and you know all the flaws already within that moment of one minute you progress your mind 20 years forward and you're already seeing through the person you're already above the situation that's occurring now and you're bored of it and that's 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 sociopathically calculating you're seeing through the person so much that you are advancing your mind 20 years of friendship of that person and within of that one minute you've already have uh, um, a calculated amount of understanding who the person is all the flaws of the person all the characteristics all of this and that and that and that and then you wait for the person to mess up and then that's when you pounce and you attack. That's when you defend yourself the best. Because the person is 20 years um, acknowledged within you. That's how you do it. It's kind of hard to explain a little bit. But you have to push the friendship in your mind 20 years within that moment right now. And then you already see through the person and you know all of his tricks. You know, it's kind of weird to do that. But you have to like see through, 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 through. You know, and... Uh, you see through the person with the bat, all the energy, all the personality, all the facade, all the flaws. That child is swinging the bat, a baby. Imagine a baby swinging a bat trying to hit your ankles. It's not going to do nothing. That's how even a grown adult would be hitting you. The child swinging the bat, hitting you in the head, just bopping you with a plastic bat. That's how it would be. You would not be hurt. Just like this. Let's, let's take it more further. Like Imagine if you were attacked by an alien's. Like if you were attacked by aliens, let's say that there were, uh, an, uh, um, aliens were out here in the atmosphere and then they had a transmitter and there was like a, like a, um, another thing that they controlled remotely and they had this machine that shot a laser and it shot you. The laser is supposed to uh, disintegrate you. But if you see through the situation again, it's unbelievable. If you see it through, through the situation, even though they're detached from the machine and they're remotely controlling the machine that is actually shooting you, you can still um, quantumly and through space and time send that information and get all of their emotional state 
and see through them and see through the whole thing and you will not be disintegrated you know because you're seeing through them because they're pressing the button and that remote is carrying all the information from them remotely uh, uh, through waves in the air through the to the to the transmitter all their personality and characters being carried through the waves to to uh, to uh, to, uh, to create a, the ignition of blast toward you from from the machine and so you're getting all that from them you have to think above and above and above you know and uh, again this rich cesspit is and uh, this is my ideas and it's more greater and grander than uh, what I'm trying to say but that's how you would probably defend yourself and it sounds unbelievable but I think that in the future we will, we will uh, see that that's true Thank you all very much. Take care.